Hello and welcome back to ICS 100. So we're going to be looking at, um, you know, different services and like connecting to the internet and, um, you know, different speeds and things like that. So, you know, this is something that we don't really think about too much because, you know, we just go home, we plug into the internet, you know, you get online using wireless or you come to campus, you know, and you use our um, infrastructure here, you know, our wireless and our system. So, you know, these are things that we probably don't think about too much, you know, from an everyday standpoint, because we're just so used to it being there, just like our, you know, phone, being able to fire up our phone and get online using that. So let's jump into this, um, the slides and look at some uh, key terms as well. So the first one we're going to look at is, um, is bandwidth. And what bandwidth is, it's the transmission speed or, you know, the capacity of the line. So how much data can be transmitted through this line? And we have four different categories. And you can see them here where we have voice band, which is basically like our telephone lines, and then our medium band, which, you know, radio waves, AM radio is an example. And then broadband, which is, you know, multiple signals and traffic types. And then as well, we have baseband, which is a single signal transmitted. Um, so you can see the different types of bandwidths that we have available to us. Um, and, you know, we most of the time we use um, broadband when we're connecting to the internet. So when we're connecting to the internet, you know, we have... Uh, many ways to get online. If we already kind of thought about it, you know, you can get online here at Leeward, you can use your phone, um, you know, and the different ways, you know, they do provide us with different speeds with different amount of bandwidth that we have. And as well, they all have a different cost associated with them. So, you know, we got to take that into mind because, you know, how much does something cost and what are we getting out of it as well? So, you know, it's important to keep that in mind because we want to make sure that what we're paying for is, you know, is appropriate and it's going to be what we need, um, especially if you're looking to do things such as like, you know, streaming Netflix or streaming from other video services, you know, you're going to make sure you have enough bandwidth to support those. So let's look at different ways that we can connect to the internet and we're going to start off with looking at um, leased lines. So let's jump in and start looking at leased lines. So leased lines are, um, you know, we basically set up a contract between the provider, so, you know, the person you're going to be buying from and um, the customer, which would be, you know, you or a business. And usually this is kind of expensive because, you know, you're paying for, you know, a certain amount of bandwidth as well. And because of that, we usually look for some high capacity lines. So on the next slide, we can actually see some different um, speeds that we have here. So we have a a T1, which is about 1.5 megabit per second. And then we have a T2, which is about 6.3 megabit per second. And then a T3, which is 44.7 megabit per second. So you can see here that the least lines, you know, if you look at a T3, that's a lot of um, bandwidth that we have available to us. So you can see why, um, you know, as well, you get into a contract. So you make sure you're guaranteed that so that you know that's what you're going to be receiving. So let's jump back into the slides and start looking at, um, you know, how we connect at home and different connections we use at home. So when we're at home, we usually are going to be um, connecting in two different ways. And this is either going to be um, DSL or using um, cable. So DSL is a little bit different than what we have for cable because DSL actually, um, it uses our phone lines. So it uses the phone lines that's already provided within our um, our house and you know it basically it's being used to replace dial-up services as well. And it does provide us with a higher speed access than dial-up services. So you know keep that in mind that DSL it's great um, but the further you are away from like the main station the slower it's going to be. So you want to keep that in mind like how far are you away from one of their distribution areas. And you can see there are several different types of DSL. So you can see in the table that, you know, each type of DSL has um, different speeds, you know, associated with it. So there's different upload speeds and download speeds. So you want to keep that in mind. If you're looking at getting DSL, you want to keep in mind, what is my upload speed? What is my download speed? You want to get something that's going to be appropriate for your needs. So, you know, keep that in mind that when you're looking at DSL, you know, what is the speed they're going to give me, um, you know, for upload and download. And as well, um, you know, think about the distance you are. Because you want to make sure that, 
you know, you're going to be able to do what you need to do. So if you want to watch videos, you know, or play games online, you want to make sure that your DSL connection is going to provide you with the capabilities to do that. So now let's jump in and look at cable. So cable is a little bit different because what this does is it actually uses the existing cable TV infrastructure. So you kind of piggybacks on that existing infrastructure that we already have. And a lot of times it will be faster than DSL. But you know, with cable as well, the speed might vary depending on what you are willing to pay. So I did a little bit of research and you know, found out you know, what different costs and speeds that we have available to us. And so you can see in this slide that um, price to speed, you can see that if you get a 100 meg connection, you're gonna be paying about $108 a month. Though if you get the basic two meg connection, you know, you're only gonna be paying $15 a month. So you, know, you can see that within this that it varies greatly. You know, I would say most of us probably have the, um, about the $58 price point, so around like $60, $70 is usually probably the pr price point that we have at home. You know, and this is what's providing us that ability to play video games and watch Netflix or, you know, stream TV shows using Hulu and things like that. So, you know, that's kind of where we're probably at and our price points that we have. Um, another type that, of connection we have is actually um, a satellite TV or satellite connection. Sorry, not satellite TV, a satellite connection that we can have. Um, so let's jump back into the slides and look at, look at this as well. So a satellite um, connection is, you know, it's going to be very expensive because think about it, you're using satellites. These are orbiting the earth. It's going to be expensive as well. It's going to be a lot slower than DSL. Um, but one of the benefits about this is that, you know, because it's a satellite, you can use it almost anywhere. So we have a lot of times, you know, that you might want to use a satellite connection, such as if you're doing research in a remote area, you know, this can provide you with the ability to communicate with other people as well. So another connection that we're very used to um, having is actually um, our cell phone service. So we've gotten used to having this around. It's been around for a while. So different ones we had are, um, you know, 1G, which was analog signals. And, you know, this was in the 80s. And then we had 2G, which we went to digital. So it was nice, gave us a little um, improved quality there and this was in the 90s and then in the 3G you know this came about with the smartphones and this is like in your 2000s that 3G started to be around and finally today you know we're pretty much using 4G uh, with all our mobile devices today so you can see that you know satellite and cell services you know do differ a little bit where um, you know our satellite, it's very expensive and we don't really use it much. It's going to be used with, uh, you know, remote locations and everything. And our cell service, we pretty much were using it daily. Um, you know, we have 4G connectivity and, you know, we're able to watch things and browse things and, uh, you know, download movies as well, you know, using our mobile devices. So the cell service has gotten a lot more popular and it's pretty widespread. You can usually get pretty good connectivity uh, in most populated areas. So um, another service that, you know, is kind of, we don't have it um, available to us in Hawaii, but you can find this on the mainland, is actually fiber optics. So let's jump back into slides and look at fiber optics. So fiber optics service, um, you know, this is nice because it actually provides a very high speed connectivity. And Google does, is one of the main ones that does this, and you can read about it at this URL here. And, you know, what's nice about it is that Google's kind of providing about um, a thousand megabit per second connection for a nice reasonable price of $70 a month. So that's just amazing because we're paying, you know, about that for like 15 megs a month. So it's the price difference is just crazy for this. Um, I wish Google would come out here to Hawaii and do this for us. I would spend $70 a month for um, high speed connectivity like that. Um, I think all our minds would be blown with having that high speed um, internet service at home. So how do we go about these connections? Like what are the cables? What do the cables look like? Well, for our physical connections, you know, this is what we're gonna be using um, for the cabling. And 
So keep that in mind. And basically, you know, these do differ depending on what, you know, connection you're going to be using. So keep that in mind that they do differ depending on what type of service you have. Um, so one of the popular ones that we've seen regularly um, are called twisted pair. And these you will see in your telephone lines and as well as ethernet cables. So you could see in the ethernet cable why they're called a twisted pair because each of the pairs are twisted together. Um, and, you know, there is a reason behind this and if you're interested in learning more about about this, you know, ICS 184 would get you uh, a little more in depth about cabling and everything as well. And next, the other type of cable we have is our coax cable. And you can see here's kind of an image of how it would look. And our coax cable is pretty much used mostly um, for our cable TV service and cable TV. So if you actually had Oceanic Time Warner, this is what you would actually see. You can find these cables running throughout your house. And then finally, if you, you know, if we were able to get Google Fiber, we would be using a fiber optic cable. And, you know, this does uh, differ as well because it's using fiber optics and this uses um, light to transmit and receive data. So, you know, because it's fiber optics, it's able to communicate at the speed of light and send everything. So keep that in mind that we do have different cables and you know, each cable does provide us with um, a different bandwidth and transmission speed that it is capable of doing. So, um, you know, hopefully this has been interesting and you've learned a little bit about how we go and connect to the internet and, you know, different speeds that are possible. So thank you and we'll see you next time.